Hey skaters and thanks a lot for tuning in. In this video I am going to give you one single exercise that will allow you to do the double push skating technique. Why is the double push so popular? Simply the fastest technique there is. When we get to the end of this video you will know how to do the double push skating technique. All you need is a bit of motivation, some skates and a helmet. Just to clarify what the double push technique actually is if you haven't watched my previous videos. The double push is unlike classic skating where you push straight to the side, the double push you push to the side, recover the legs behind the other legs, and then you push underneath yourself. So instead of just pushing straight to the side, you do still push straight to the side, go here with the curry, and then this leg is gonna create the double push underneath yourself before you flip over and push to the side. That said, you won't learn how to do a perfect, efficient double push in one single day or after watching one single video, even though it's pretty good. Therefore, you need to do this a ton of times and you need to implement it when you're out skating for longer skating sessions. However, if you do manage to do this drill correctly, you will get the feel of that double push underneath yourself. And trust me, it's impossible to not do it if you do this drill correctly. However, there's a lot of things that you might mess up when you do this exercise. Like your upper body might fall out of position, you tilt with the hip, you open up your skates. So the idea here is that you're gonna do something a little different to normal skating in order to get the feel of the double push. Once you get that, you try and dial in all the other things. So at the end of it, you have your same good old skating, but now with a double push. First, I'm just gonna explain you the video because that's the main part. After that, I will go through all the common mistakes so you can avoid them. And then at the end of it, I am gonna show you a little upgrade. If you feel like this is too easy, well, try that one out. Ideally, it's not necessary, but it will make it a little easier to really figure out how to do this and to visualize it as you, as you skate. You would want to either find a bike path where there's a line in the middle or a skating track like I have here. If you can't find that, go to a grocery store and get some chalk and you can create your own. Otherwise, you can use a, a cone or different things. Just something that creates a straight line that you will then be able to kind of slalom. So the concept here is that you force your leg underneath your body. As you can see here, you put it out almost in the inner edge, but try to be right on top of it, and then you pull it on the other side of that line in the middle. I'll show you here in slow-mo. So you put it down on the outside, cross it to the other side of that line in the middle. Of course, we're gonna overdo the movement here. This is not how you should be skating, because ideally you wanna put the skate down right under your center of gravity. However, in this exercise, we really try and force it so you get the feeling of how it actually feels to push underneath yourself in a double push. As promised, I will now go through some of the things that you might mess up when you activate your under push, your double push. First off is the upper body. It's kind of like a counterbalance and because you force that leg under yourself, a lot of people have the habit of throwing the upper body away to create that counterbalance. But instead you should just sit in your hips and be as compact as possible and try and use your apps to maintain that skating position because otherwise that power that you're going to create in your double push is just going to get lost in the upper body. Second thing is to open up the hips because we focus so much on that leg on the ground, which we should, that we might open up the other hip, whether it's the skate, just opening up the feet or opening up the entire hip just to pull us out of position because we want to force that under. And again, if we don't tuck in the glutes here, we're just gonna lose power. It's not gonna be an under push, it's just gonna be an under roll. But keep everything pointing forward. Um, a little trick I use myself, I do it as part of my warm up sometimes. I try and put my hands out here, because then you can easily see if that is tilting or just moving out of position, pointing other places than straight forward. Uh, you're probably messing up something here. So try and keep them there and dial in how you should be skating and then you can put them on your back or, or use them as you would when you're out skating. Speaking of the hands, that might be another thing you mess up. Because we're so focused again on this, that this could just fly around. And again, you want this to be the same rhythm with your feet and your legs, obviously. Because then when you do actual skating, you'd be able to use that momentum and timing and create even more speed. So to do a good double push, you also need to be very flexible. You need to be relaxed in the right places. There is the one mistake that we often do when we try and loosen up more. We do a lot more of the bouncing. Bouncing in the legs is good because then we can use that momentum, the body weight, and carry that into the next skate. However, if we just do vertical bouncing with the upper body, it's just gonna put more strain on our legs. We're not gonna be as consistent and powerful and efficient in our pushes. So make sure you're not going up and down. Fix your eyes on some spot at the end of the straightaway. And try and see if you're going up and down. It's probably because you're going up and down. The final and last thing I want to remind you of is that you shouldn't 
overlift the recovery leg too far up in the sky. Just try and keep it pretty compact close to the ground because the further up we lift it, the further backwards, the bigger a chance we have of falling forwards and then losing the hips behind and not being in that control position. Also, if you kick it up high, we're not gonna be as compact and we're not gonna be as powerful. And that's just gonna increase the risk of throwing everything else out of position. So try and keep that recovery leg somewhat close to the ground so that we can get it back here, do a nice circle, put it down right under the center of gravity of our body weight and engage another double push. I hope you enjoyed this video. And just before we finish off, I'm gonna show you the expert edition of this one where you just stay on one leg and do a slalom with double pushes. It's quite complicated, but if you do this first part a bunch of times, you might get to the point where even the second part feels pretty natural. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you want to see some of my other cool videos. If you want to get faster in skates, I made two training programs, one for sprinters or anybody looking to improve their top speed, and then another plan, a 12-week plan for people or skaters wanting to prepare for an inline marathon. That was it for now. Stay tuned. See you next time.